Hello guys, in this lesson, we want to add the food page to the project. So after this lesson, whenever you click on a food, you will be redirected to a beautiful page like this. Follow me in this lesson if you like to make yours. Here we want to start by creating the food page component. So go to the code, right click on the pages folder and create a new folder with the name of food. Then right click on the food folder and create a new file with the name of foodpage.js Then right click on it again and create the foodpage.module.css Then go to the foodpage.js file, write RFC for creating the functional component Then here write import classes from data slash foodpage.module.css Okay, we just created the food page component. We're going to update it on the next step. But before that, we need to add it to the app routes. So let's go to the code, click on the app routes, close the explorer, and here at the bottom, duplicate the tag route. Instead of the first tag, write food, and instead of the route parameter, write ID. And for its element, use food page that we created seconds ago and it will be imported from here. Here inside the path, we need the ID of the food because we want to find the food inside the food page by its ID. So we need to get it. But for now, let's check this one. Now is the time for adding the get by ID function to the food service. We need it for getting the food by its ID. Let's do that. Close the app routes. Open the explorer, go to the services and food service. Here we need to write another simple function. Write export ans get by id equal to an async function that gets food id as input. Then it goes to the sample foods and finds the food item where its id is equal to this input foot id that we pass to the get by id function here we go this function is ready let's go and check this one now is the time for getting back to the food page and loading the food by using id parameter and get by id function inside it let's do that close the food service and here inside the food page at the first line let's define the food state by writing const food and set food equal to Use a state with the default value of an empty object. On the second line, I want to get the ID route parameter from the app routes. So write const curly braces, put the ID, the name of the route parameter, and make it equal to use params, use params hook from the React router DOM. So it will give us the ID that's inside the route. Now we want to load the food by this ID. Just like the home page, we need use effect from the React Router DOM. So we need to call it, give it a handler. Then inside it, we need to use get by ID function from the food service. Pass the ID. Then pass this set food directly inside it. As you know, set food is a function to update the state of the food. And this will pass the food coming from the food service to the set food function and the food will be updated. But this use effect is dependent to this ID. So let's pass it as the dependency list of this use effect. To this moment, if we go to the browser and click on a food, we'll see the food page. As you can see, the address shows slash food slash two. So here we need to find the food associated with the ID of two. And we already did it. So we just need to show it. Here remove the div and put an empty template tag and inside it put curly braces for checking if the food is available. Then we need to show the details of the foods. This part is very similar to the thumbnails part with very minor changes. Here we need a div with a class name of classes.container. Inside it, first of all, I want to show an image with the class name of classes.image with the src of backtick slash foods slash dollar curly braces food dot image url and its alternative text would be food dot name 
Now, if you check out the browser, we'll see just a single food image. Now, if we go to another food, we'll see the associated image with this ID. So it's working pretty good. Let's continue and add more details. Here at the bottom of the image, let's add another div with the class name of classes.details. Inside it, create another div with the class name of classes dot header inside this header will show the food name and the favorite icon so let's start with the food name put a span here with the class name of classes dot name with the text of food dot name and at the bottom of it put another span with the conditional class name just like the thumbnails component with backtick the first class is classes dot favorite that always will be used. The second class checks the food dot favorite. If it's favorite, adds nothing. Otherwise, it adds the classes dot not the not class. Close the span, and here put the heart icon. Now, if you go to the browser, we'll see the food name and the heart icon. Let's continue adding star rating and food origins. Here, after this header div. Add a div with the class name of classes.rating and inside it let's use the star rating component that we created and give it the stars of food.stars but this time we use a bigger size as of 25 to make the stars bigger because we want the stars to be shown bigger okay now let's add the origins Add another div with a class name of classes.origins. Here we need to render food.origins. If available, map them with every single origin into span that its key is equal to origin and its text is equal to origin2. Then save it. Now, if you go to the browser, we'll see the origin of this food too. Now we can add the tags of the food. Let's do that. Here at the bottom of the origin, add another class with the class name of classes.tags. Here inside this div, we need to check if food.tags have value, then show the tags component that its tags is equal to food.tags.map that every single tag will be converted into an object with the name of tag. Close the tag, but here set its for food page to true. Let me explain. Open the explorer and check out the data.js. Here, if you look at these sample tags, you'll see every single item is an object with the name and the count. But if you look at the tags of the foods, every single item is just a string. And here inside the tags component, we are accepting the object tag that has a name and a count. And we said that for the food page, don't show the count. So if we only convert that string into an object that has a name, these tags component are going to work very well. So close it save it and check the browser as you can see we have the tags of this food beautifully placed here i know it seems to be a little bit complex if you don't like this approach you can create the tags for the food page from scratch let's continue to the cook time here at the bottom of this tags add another div with the class name of classes.cooktime Inside it, put a span and write the text of time to cook about. Put a strong tag to make it bold and write food.cooktime. And after the strong, write minutes. If we go to the browser, you'll see time to cook about 10 to 20 minutes. That this 10 to 20 minutes comes from the food. So if we go and change the food, we'll see another number, just like the other fields. Now is the time for adding the price. Let's do that. Here after this div, add another div with the class name of classes.price. 
use the price component that we created on the thumbnails part, set its price to food.price, then save it. And at the bottom of this, I want to add a button with the text of add to cart that we are going to implement on the next session that is adding the cart to the project. At the moment, this is just a button that does nothing. Okay, let's check out the browser. We have all the data, so it's the time to use CSS for making them beautiful. Let's go. Here, open up the food page.module.css and start with the container class. Container, its display should be flex, its justify content should be center, align items, center, so it will be centered horizontally and vertically on the middle, set its flex wrap to wrap, and set the margin to 3 rem. Now I want to set the min width and max width for the direct children of the container. So write container star means all the direct children of the container. So it will select this image and this div. Their min width should be 25 rem and their max width should be 40 rem. Now, if we go to the browser, we'll see them like this. Now, let's work on this image and make it rounded. Let's do that. Select the image class, set its border radius to 3 rem, set its flex to 1 and 0, so 1 for the flex grow and 0 for flex shrink, set its object fit to cover height to 35 rem and its margin to 1 rem from all sides. Let's check the result. As you can see, we have this beautiful rounded image without losing its aspect ratio. Now let's work on this part. That is the details class. Write that details. Set its width to 100%. Its display to flex. Flex direction to column from top to bottom. Flex 1, 0 or grow and shrink. Its border radius should be 3 rem. Its padding should be 2 rem. Its color should be black. And margin left could be 1 rem. Now, if we go to the browser, we'll see we have a margin from this side so we can show the details of the food more beautiful. Now, let's work on the header class and make these two separated from each other. Scroll down, select the header class, set its display to flex, and its justify content to space between. So now if you go to the browser, they are separated. So we can make them beautiful now. Select the name class, set its font size to big number, so it will be doubled, and set its font weight to bold. And for the favorite class, Set its color, the hashtag is 72929 and its font size to 2.5 RAM. Let's create the not favorite class too. So write favorite dot not and set its color to gray. If we go to the browser, we'll see a beautiful bold name here and a beautiful bold heart icon here. So if we go to the one that is not favorite, we'll see it gray. So not favorite works too. The stars are just ready. So let's work on the origins. Let's go to the code, scroll down, select origins class, set its display to flex and flex wrap to wrap and margin 1 rem from top and bottom and 0 from left and right. Now for the spans, inside the origins that represent every single origin, set their padding to 0.5 rem, their font size 1.2 rem, a little bit bigger, margin 0.5 rem from top, 0.5 rem from right, 0.5 rem from bottom, and 0 from the left, set its border radius to 2 rem, its background color to Alice Blue. I don't know I chose this color, but no, I just did. <laughs> anyway, let's check out the result. As you can see, we have this beautiful Alice Blue color and bigger origins. I want to decrease its margin bottom a little bit, because there's a lot of space. 
So I set this margin bottom to zero. And I also want to decrease the origins margin a little bit. So I make it 0.7. I think this is much better. Okay, let's work on the cook time. I select the cook time class, set its margin top to one rem, and for the span inside it, set its padding to 0.6 rem from the top, 2 rem from the right, 0.6 rem from the bottom, and 0 from the left. Set its border radius. To 10 RAM, completely rounded its font size to 1.3 RAM. Let's check the result. Okay, we have the cook time much more bigger and more beautiful. Let's work on the price. Write that price, select the price class, set its font size to 1.8 RAM, and set its margin to 2 RAM from every side except the left side. I set its color to green. Okay. Look at the browser. I also like to write a price text before it. And for doing that, I like to use before sudo element. Let's go. Write dot price, colon, colon, before. Set its content to price, space, and set its color to dark gray. Let's check it out. As you can see, we have this beautiful text here. If you don't like it, you can keep just the price as it is. Now let's work on this add to cart button and make it rounded and red. Scroll down, select the container, button inside it, set its color to white, its background color to hashtag is 72929, its border to none, its font size, 1.2 RAM, its padding to 1 RAM from every side, its border radius 10 RAM to make it rounded, and its outline to none. And for its hover effect, container button hover, set its opacity to 0.9, so we just decrease its opacity a little bit, and set its cursor to pointer. So when we hover our mouse over it, it's going to have a pointer shape. Let's check out the final result. As you can see, we have the button with its interactive behavior. Now, if we go to any other food, we'll see its details more beautiful like this. Okay, this was about this lesson. On the next lesson, I'm going to implement the cart page. You've been watching Code with Nasir, and I hope to see you next time.